both houses are well aware that I'm frustrated that not enough or certainly more public safety measures got up. Well, good evening, New Mexico. I mean, it's like the equivalent of your parents looking at your report card and being pleased you didn't fail every class. As long as you tried your best, they're yeah. not mad. They're just disappointed. But our governor doesn't necessarily believe that our lawmakers did everything they could to tackle public safety in the 30 day session. Yeah, and so much so there's talk she may call a special session specifically on public safety initiatives. I mean, she said as much today during a news conference surrounded by the legislative leaders at the center of her frustration shortly after our 30 day session wrapped. But even with that disappointment, there are many bills heading to her desk, including a record setting state budget. Let's get now to our ace legislative team of Griffin Rushton and Spencer Schott, who simply can't seem to break away from the roundhouse at all. Uh, Griffin, Tessa wants me to let you know it is safe. You can go home now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, we've been up here almost every day this session, so we figured another late night can't hurt that much. Well, th th there you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, the governor, the legislative leaders that you guys talked to today, I mean, they all agree there was a lot asked of lawmakers in a 30-day session, you know, specifically looking at public safety. Not a whole lot made it all the way to the governor. No, not a whole lot made it there, but it also depends the success level of the legislative session really depends on who you ask. Like you mentioned, we heard from the House Republicans, the House Democrats and the governor, and they all kind of have a different take on how this last 30 days went. Yeah, it seems the governor is the most frustrated tonight. She brought an ambitious slate of public safety proposals to the roundhouse this year, and these five bills are what state lawmakers deliver. We're talking about a seven day waiting period for gun sales, banning guns at polling places across the state, increased sentences for second degree murder and attempted murder charges, allowing more retirees to fill open public safety positions, and a plan to keep certain repeat offenders behind bars. The governor said today she is very happy happy with these five bills and believes they will make an impact in New Mexico, but she was hoping for more from state lawmakers. She got everyone's attention, as we mentioned, when she said a special session to address public safety is not off the table, even though special sessions haven't always worked out in the past. I want to just say to New Mexicans, uh, I don't think it's safe out there. And I don't think that they think it's safe out there because it plays out horrifically every single day. Um, and until it is safe in every neighborhood and in every city, I don't think any of our jobs are done. So what would the governor want to address in a special session? Despite bringing a whole slate of gun control proposals to this session, the governor says she wanted state lawmakers to approve a bill reworking how the courts address competency and behavioral health treatments. But just like that pretrial detention bill, the governor knows that approving a competency bill would be another heavy lift for lawmakers who are quick to argue that they already did a lot to address crime and public safety during this session. Yes, yeah, specifically the Democrats. They say because of them, more violent criminals are going to stay behind bars for longer because of a bill that they passed that extends the penalties on second degree murder and attempted murder. The Democrats also say they're proud of the two gun bills that managed to make it all the way up to the governor's desk. So let's take a look at those two bills. They include a mandatory seven day waiting period on all gun sales and banning guns from polling places. Republicans, though, did get an amendment made on that bill to exempt folks who have a conceal and carry permit allows them to bring their guns into the polling places. They were also able to pass a limit a last minute bill dealing with pretrial detention. While it's not the full rebuttable presumption that the governor was really hoping for, this bill would require repeat felony offenders to be held in jail if they got arrested again while out on bond. And they say there are multiple aspects of the budget that will also help curb crime. We made great headway and targeted legislation to make a real difference in the life of people today. That includes for resources and funding for law enforcement through our state budget to improve their work, funding in the budget to improve our judicial system, as well as pretrial monitoring, which we know is a huge component of, of public safety, uh, particularly in urban areas. 
But on the other side of the aisle, Republicans say legislators missed the mark this session. Of course, Republicans oppose any gun regulation, saying it violates their Second Amendment rights, but they do point to other areas that really weren't addressed at all in these last 30 days. We need to tackle education, we need to tackle, tackle mental health, and we got to tackle career criminals. Until we do those three things, we're going to have a constant revolving door of violent criminals in our state. Now, Republicans did have a bill that would have increased penalties for felons who were in possession of firearms and used them in a crime, but that bill died in committee just yesterday. Yeah, and we'll mention a lot of other public safety bills also stalled in the committee process, some of which because of there was concerns from lawmakers, but others just because they ran out of time. Yeah, I mean, it's a 30-day session after all. Lawmakers brought more than 600 bills to the Roundhouse this year. That's a ton for a short session. You know, time is one thing, but we know there were some initiatives that were just outright rejected from the start. Yeah, there were, and not for lack of trying. State lawmakers on both sides of the aisle made another big push to address the longstanding issues at CYFD. They believe it's well past time the legislature steps in. We saw bills calling for more oversight, making some drug exposure programs mandatory, and even establishing a new commission to manage the department. None of those bills gained momentum, largely because the governor wouldn't let them. The CYFD secretary told lawmakers pretty early in the session that she asked the governor to restrict or block any of these CYFD bills with hopes of addressing the issues at the department from within. The governor told us today there is a new plan in the works, though. We need a lot of people at the table, and it has to be CYFD plus, 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 because all of these services from education to the Department of Health are all over state government. And I'm going to say that in many administrations, we've missed the opportunity and the requirement to make them work more cohesively together. You're going to get a blueprint well before the 60-day session, making it clear that, like public safety, we're not waiting for 60 days to make the improvements that New Mexicans want in CYFD. They have my word. Now, it is worth noting that state lawmakers did approve updated background checks requirements for CYFD workers, and there is extra funding for the department built into the state budget. But the lack of CYFD reform was not the only major rejection we saw during this session. No, it wasn't. And for the second year in the row, lawmakers shot down the hotly debated Paid Family and Medical Leave Act. Now, th essentially, this bill would have required employers and employees to pay into a state fund to pay workers who are taking leave due to a medical emergency, birth of a child, or death in the family. This bill made it all the way through the Senate, multiple House committees, and then died on the House floor by just two votes. Republicans say blocking paid family medical leave was a victory because they believe it would have hurt small businesses. The fact that that bill came to a screeching halt on the House floor, I think, sends a huge message. Republicans led the way on that. We had help with some of our, our moderate colleagues on the other side as well. But, I mean, we had literally a thousand pages of, or I'm sorry, a hundred thousand pages of signatures of New Mexicans that didn't like that broad proposal. It, it's, it's not flexible for business owners, for employees that don't want to participate in that system. And Speaker of the House Javier Martinez says this is the case for some of these larger and sometimes more controversial bills. They don't pass the first or second time they are introduced, but that doesn't mean they're going to give up trying and they're getting ready to reintroduce it next year. You, you are undoubtedly going to have people across the political spectrum who are going to have some concerns, right? Some, some of those concerns may be technical in nature, right? Um, you know, maybe people are hearing from constituents, whatever the case might be. Uh, the fact of the matter is we remain committed to adopting policies that uplift working people, that uplift working families. And like he said, they are working in the interim to kind of iron out the, twinks, twi uh, the kinks in that bill and really make sure that it is a, a 
good bill for folks on both sides of the aisle, and we'll see how far it gets next year. Yeah, we've seen that a lot with bills, including the two gun control bills that landed on the governor's desk this year. They got started in last year's session, couldn't make it across the finish line, and then this year they were able to gain some more momentum. We could see a similar path for plans for a so-called strategic water supply. Lawmakers could not get that last-minute bill across the finish line, but they've said that they're going to work on this in the interim and will likely be able to hit the ground running at the start of next year's legislative session. Yeah, and that's just not the end of just even the bills that made it to the governor's desk. She still has vetoing power. Nothing is set in stone just yet. And she even has a line item veto power that she could use on the budget. And so she has 20 days to veto anything on a person and anything she doesn't sign in the next 20 days will be a pocket veto. That was 10 minutes of well presented breakdown of 30 days of legislative coverage. Guys, great job. Go home, okay? <laughs> well deserved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>